Welcome to the 36th Annual Mayor's Arts Awards. My name is Mike Smith. I'm the chair of the Bellingham Arts Commission. The Mayor's Arts Awards ceremony is an annual opportunity for the mayor to recognize those that have contributed to the arts community. Honorees are selected by a jury made up of members of the Bellingham Arts Commission with the final selection made by the mayor. Nominations can be submitted by anybody. The online nom nomination form can be filled out anytime during the year and the deadline is December 31st. As you watch tonight's ceremony, think about those that you know that could qualify next year. It's not too early to begin the nomination process. The Bellingham Arts Commission is a 10-member volunteer uh, group. Please stand as I call your name. Barbara Howard. Barbara, over there. <laughs> Shirley Erickson. <laughs> Jenny Cottrell. I've, I've not seen Gabriel Miles. Is she here tonight? Gabriel, welcome. Trish Harding, Denise Snyder, and Margo Myers. I don't believe she's here. Margo, you made it. Great. And then special thank you to Ann Morgan Curry. Ann Morgan. Ann Morgan is leaving our commission, so if you are so inclined to volunteer, we have actually two openings. So you can go online to the city's website, cob.org, and fill out an application. The Bellingham Art Commission mission is to serve as advisors and advocates for the enhancement and integration of arts in the community. We have six objectives. Raise public awareness of the need to integrate art into the cityscape, Establish and maintain communication systems within the arts community. Develop a broad base of financial support for local arts and artists. Develop strong relationships within the city of Bellingham staff and elected members serving as a resource on matters of aesthetic and artistic importance. Contribute to the economic vitality of the community by working with the city and other agencies business and organization to integrate arts into all public projects throughout the city. And six, advise the city on art acquisitions, historic landmarks, and citywide art issues. With respect to financial support for local arts and artists, the Arts Commission has been working very closely with city staff and the council over the last two years to develop a 1% for art ordinance. This ordinance will establish that 1% of the funds for every above ground city project in excess of $2 million will be integrated into that project. So I get asked a lot, what type of art? And all I can say is let your imagination run wild. It can be as simple as decorative railings on a bridge or as fanciful, fanciful and intricate as the kinetic sculpture over in front of the WTA bus terminal. Speaking as a professional architect, I can tell you that across this nation and worldwide, the most vibrant cities and towns are those that embrace and support readily accessible public art. The following is a quote from Steve Morris, the former president of the National Conference of State Legislatures. One of the keys to building and sustaining communities and promoting high quality economic development is support and funding of the arts. We need to emphasize that potential employers look at enrichment of lives as well as other essential services for the communities in which they want to locate. We need to continue and increase our support for the arts. In today's competitive marketplace, it has never been truer that supporting the arts means business. So tonight, I'm very pleased to announce that after nearly two years of work, next month you will see the 1% for Art Ordinance introduced to the Bellingham City Council. So before we begin, I want to thank the Mount Baker Theater for making this space available. I want to thank all of you for being here. We've got standing room only crowd. This is fantastic. We're probably going to have to move over next door into the big theater in the near future. So uh, this, this is great. I love seeing a crowd like this. Uh, I want to thank John McCulloch for donating the artwork. <laughs> K. 
Carrie Lane for creating these this year's awards. So without further ado, it is my honor and pleasure to introduce to you Mary Kelly Linville. Thank you very much. Thank you. I promise we're still legal. If anybody's worried about that, we're check it. We checked. Um, thank you so much for filling this room. The, the last time I got to do these awards was over in the Radio Museum. And uh, it, I don't know if it was more people are here tonight or it was a larger venue, but I love the packed crowds we've been getting at the Mount Baker Theater. Uh, Tom, Timothy, or is it Timothy Egan? I didn't get to go because I was somewhere else, but I heard that there was 1,100 people, a full house for the author of The Boys in the Boat, 600 people in that theater for the Kapow event where we were looking for placemaking ideas through Bellingham, and this room is full too. So that just shows the kind of community we have that supports the culture and arts in our, in our city. And I think that um, I'd like to give the Arts Commission another hand for their support that they give to the elected officials and the staff in the city. I'd also thank them for spearheading the 10% for the arts. Uh, we did that at the FET <laughs> over 10 years I meant to say. Well, I, I, was, I scared them at my art talk at the museum a couple weeks ago because I said a tenth of a percent. So <laughs> just kind of evening it out. I just want to tell you that arts in our community are very important to me. My great-grandfather is uh, memorialized across the city, but he was a bronze artist. And there are many pieces of art that he made, including the tulip fountain that you see at the Village Green, the cherubs that used to be on the fountain in Elizabeth Park. They're my mom's feet when she was two years old. Uh, they're hidden in the basement of the Parks building now because they were stolen once. All the plaques on all the parks, he did those. And uh, mostly architectural things. And we're, we're doing actually a book on his cr uh, contributions to our community. So thank you so much for caring and supporting uh, the arts. And uh, we're gonna go ahead now and do the fun part of the evening, which is give the awards. Uh, the way this is gonna work is I'm gonna read a blurb about the each uh, nominee and recipient, and then we're gonna see something up here on the screen, and then it won't be a surprise because you will have already seen who the person is, but then I'm gonna announce their name. <laughs> And then they're going to get one of those beautiful, wonderful mugs that were created especially for this event. I'm thrilled with those. They're beautiful. Okay. This gentleman is the brains behind Mech Madness Designs, a costume, props, and mechanical effects committee. Combining imagination with technical skill, he repurposes items into post-apocalyptic armor, unusual me mechanical uh, gadgets, and musical instruments. Tonight he is being recognized for his noteworthy collaborative project, RoboHand, a method of using 3D technology to create prosthetic hands, arms, and fingers. My, my buddy from high school and I, when we were still teenagers, got into building things like medieval armor and costuming and that sort of thing. And then as time went on, I had less time for sitting there and linking together thousands of individual rings to make a chainmail shirt. Um, and then started building plate armor and getting into um, creating props. Um, some of which was actually for, you know, I've done a little bit of stuff with the, the local film community here in Bellingham, which is a great artistic community. They're, they're a lot of fun. But one of the things I created was a, a, a giant mechanical uh, pu puppet hand. And I, I actually made those for a while for various companies. Essentially, it's, um, it's, it's a mechanical hand that can go inside of like a monster suit for a movie or in, you know, the, 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 or various other costumes to give these larger than life costumes realistic finger motion. 
I posted a video of the initial design for that giant puppet hand online. Um, that was seen by a gentleman who was a finger amputee in South Africa. His name is, his name is Rich. Uh, Rich saw the video because he was trying to uh, build his own replacement fingers in his garage workshop. Um, and so contacted me to see if I might be willing to help him in that regard. And so we collaborated together. Uh, eventually developed a prototype for a single finger that led to us being contacted by the mother of a child who was born without fingers on one hand. And she was wondering, hey, I saw you guys are working on a single finger design. Can you build an entire set? Um, so we decided to do that. <laughs> and we were just kind of doing, doing this in our garages, but uh, we came up with what appeared to be a reasonable prototype and then through a series of other connections uh, eventually looked into 3d printing as a way to more easily fabricate components uh, it could be the the original prototype could be built for about 150 dollars in materials uh, as com as compared to a comparable device um, through through a, the normal prosthetics market would be anywhere from two thousand to five thousand dollars roughly i felt very fortunate to have been able to chase something that was my artistic passion and then have it turn into a different sort of project. Could we have Ivan Owen come forward, please? I'll tell you, that's pretty cool. Okay. As I already know, wonderful people live in Bellingham. Since it began 15 years ago, this film festival has done an incredible job of promoting the understanding of humanity's issues with equality, justice, and health. Over 250 films have been shown, highlighting issues from around the globe, as well as the talents of local, independent, and professional filmmakers. The festival builds great community participation and connections by being entirely run by volunteers and showing films in venues across the city and county. Described by the Audience Awards as one of the nine film festivals that are making a difference. Uh, the Bellingham Human Rights Film Festival has been around for 15 years. Uh, we've had films from several states come to us. We've had films from various countries around the world come to us each year. Se sentía como un temblor. Las casas están partidas. Pero si la naturaleza se destruye, prácticamente el nahual de la persona se destruye. We're not going to eat gold. We're not going to bathe in gold. We're not going to drink gold. Está contaminada y ya no es para uso humano. Allá donde está la represa de cola, que tomen, que tomen pues. No hay problemas sociales para ustedes, amigos de Chabacán. No son problemas sociales. Nos fuimos mañana a la mochila, ¿verdad? ¡Sí! Que la empresa ha venido a hacer una división en nuestra, aquí en nuestra comunidad. It's tragic the role that we play just to defend corporations. Discussion is always a part of our festivals, not just showing the film. And the audience finds it very rewarding to actually talk to the directors of the film and issues that uh, they came up against when making the films. There's a dead bird over there. This is an average amount of plastic in this chick. What's happening on Midway is like the canary in the coal mine. That patch of garbage in the Pacific is growing. And right now it's having a huge impact on the species that call Midway home. And to tie that into our local community, we were able to get films made by Frederick Dent on homelessness in, in Bellingham. What's the financial incentive for helping people who are homeless have better access to care? There's no doubt that people who are homeless suffer disproportionately from behavioral health illness. 
they're more likely to die within just a few years of being homeless. And the deterioration of the quality of life happens very, very fast. To me, it's important that we try and get a lot of people interested in being active and making a situation better for our community and our country. Shirley Osterhaus, would you come up and accept the award, please? This is for the Bellingham Human Rights Film Festival. This is a big collaborative effort of a lot of volunteers in our community, and this is the um, this group is just a few of the 25 volunteers that we had working on the film festival this year. So I want to just say that we are really grateful. We're really excited to be able to be here tonight and to receive this honor. On behalf of all the members of the, our Bellingham Human Rights Film Festival Volunteer Committee, I want to thank those that nominated us tonight. I want to thank all of you who are supporters of the arts, and I thank the city of Bellingham for this Mayor's Art Award. For 15 years, our annual Human Rights Film Festival has been a vibrant expression of the power of the arts. You saw some of that in the film clips already. The power that the arts have to inform, challenge, inspire, and motivate. The power that the arts have to bring us together with an experience of the collective pain, collective joy, and collective beauty that surrounds us. The power of film that connects us with people and concerns around the globe. Participants tell us that the film festival is one of the best things about Bellingham. And we know, and you know, that Bellingham is a really special place. It's full of people with a deep commitment to social and environmental justice and human rights. It's full of people who love the beauty of our community and value the gifts that are granted to us simply by living in the midst of such bounty. And Bellingham has lots of people who recognize the responsibility we have for doing something for doing what we can to preserve and extend well-being and rights to all people and the earth. The festival started small. The Pickford planted the initial seed with a couple of volunteers in 2000, who in turn led others to volunteer. This year, as I said, we had 25 you know, committee members and others that joined in at the end. And they were uh, community members faculty from the different colleges, students, all volunteering in different capacities to make this event happen in February. We invite any of you who would like to join us as a volunteer to just let us know. We'd welcome you. So since, the, since 2000, we've grown um, with, um, with the festival to having it now be a 10-day film festival with 20 to 25 films shown and with host venues throughout the county. Films are screened at the Pickford Film Center, Western Washington University, Whatcom Community College, Bellingham Technical College, Northwest Indian College, Ferndale and Deming Public Libraries, the Unitarian Fellowship, the Congregational Church all as a way to, uh, to broaden the base of people who can come to the, to the festival. We are grateful to all of our local community businesses and organizations and individual donors who make the festival financially possible. And there's a whole list on the back of our program of all those donors. The funds enable us to rent and or purchase a good number of films which if we purchase them, we place in one of the local libraries. And you can check out our website to see which films are where, uh, if you'd like to see some of them. And it's also then a way that we can keep the films of art um, in our own community. 
our community donors also enable us to keep the, vest the festival entirely free to the public. We are grateful to many of the collaborating partners, the local nonprofits, the community members who participate in leading discussions, activist groups who invite the participants to get involved locally with global issues. So we are grateful to all of them. And our festival is really about um, wanting to connect, connect people with shared values and concerns, connecting the campus to the community, connecting the city of Bellingham to the county, connecting the global to the local, connecting our lives to the wider world and to Mother Earth. And we believe that the festival provides the space, the space for our community to come together, to have our eyes opened to troubling and tragic situations, as well as to bear witness to the determination, the resilience, and the hope of people and communities around the world, which is so critically needed these days. So thank you all. Thank you very much. Okay, here's our next one. Providing a space for local actors, writers, and directors to hone their craft, this theater is not one to shy away from bold and groundbreaking performances. This was especially evident in the October production of These Seven Sicknesses by Sophocles, a marathon four and a half hour show with a cast of 25. This will be the, the second Mayor's Art Award for this theater. And I, instead of waiting, because you all clap so loudly for everyone, I'm going to say now that it's the Idiom Theater and Wes Davis will be accepting. Keeping theater accessible is something that's been really important to us. We, when we started, we were charging very little for shows. Um, I think just five or six dollars for live theater, which is kind of unheard of. This year we have a public performance um, system in place, so each show has a local business sponsor, and that sponsor, along with the theater, pays for all the seats. So in general, opening night for all of our shows is a free performance. It's generally a playwright's theater. It was started by playwrights, and most of the work we do is original work, uh, largely by local people. We're fond of saying that Idiom does more original work than any theater in the country. Um, we have for over a decade. We do kind of an insane amount of work. We sometimes do 40 shows a season. We do a lot of new playwrights festivals where we premiere you know, 12 short plays in a weekend, a lot of playwright invitationals. Um, but it's really centered on creating new work, which is something that is kind of lacking often in the theater world. The general uh, thought is that it's challenging to get um, audiences to come out and see new work, but we have found that not to be the case, luckily, and it's what we wanted to do, and it may be because not a lot of other people are doing it in this town, and we're also a relatively small theater. We have 96 seats, so filling houses isn't as big of a challenge if you have a larger theater. We had no idea um, if people would come out and see a four and a half hour show of Greek tragedies. And for a long time, I was kind of the champion of the show. I was like, you know, let's do this. It's going to be great. Come on board. You know, people will see it. It'll be fine. And people had concerns like, you know, that the title was a little dark, that people wouldn't come sit through this, that people wouldn't be interested in tragedies. And so we put it on the calendar and I just kept reassuring people and reassuring people that it was going to be fine. And then about two weeks before the show, I kind of got hit with this panic of like, people wouldn't come out and see a four and a half hour play of Greek tragedies. But they did and it, you know, went exactly the way we hoped it would. We ran it for four weekends, which is longer than we run most of our shows. And a lot of the success came from how the community responded to it and the fact that they were game to to come on that epic journey with us. Is Wes here? I don't think Wes is here. Do you want to come? I don't
don't know if they knew this, but theaters are run on caffeine and daring do, so this is perfect. Um, Glenn really wished he could be here tonight, but unfortunately slash fortunately, he's pulled away doing a dress rehearsal for one of our 40 plus shows this season. He's actually playing Watson in our Broken Homes. It's a Sherlock Holmes spoof, which is delightful. Um, these seven sicknesses, you heard a little bit about it uh, on the video that they filmed. It was a project that Glenn had seen in New York. We had the privilege of being the theater that housed its West Coast premiere which was a really phenomenal thing. Sean Graney, the playwright, has a uh, penchant for loving epic theater and condensing these amazing plays that are still relevant to our community today into contemporary adaptations that are just little nuggets of the essence of each show. So These Seven Sicknesses was all seven of Sophocles' surviving tragedies. And we got to share that um, heart with this community, which was a really amazing experience. Um, theater, in general, is the essence of communicating the human experience and sharing that experience with an audience. These Seven Sicknesses takes these stories that could have been forgotten and brought it um, to this modern generation. And we had the privilege of bringing it to this community. And we were welcomed by it. We had no idea people would sit for four and a half hours and hang out with us and eat curry and listen to us sing songs, but you did, you came. Bellingham's a unique community because of that. We, uh, Glenn mentioned in the show that we do more new and original work um, than any theater in the country, and that's true. And it's because our community keeps telling us we want to see new plays, we want to see new work, we want to hear new voices. And that's a unique thing. In New York, there are not theaters doing this sort of thing. Um, so thank you guys for allowing us to create the art that we do. Thanks. Okay, I'll keep going. Uh, this feature-length documentary about the early history of Bellingham and America's first mountain adventure race, which evolved into which evolved into the Sea to Ski. The making of this film involved an outstanding number of people from local and regional communities. Since its release in 2011, the film has been included in over 15 film festivals and received two ne Emmy nominations, The Mountain Runners, Todd w Warger and Brian Young accepting. It seemed to us that a vital part of the history of Bellingham and Mount Baker was about to be lost to the ages. So one of the primary things in uh, beginning the, the, the idea of doing this film was to keep the story local. It was, uh, it was a local story to begin with, so we wanted to do uh, 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 as much shooting as we could here in Whatcom County in Bellingham. We used uh, the streets here as sets and all of our extras were pretty much from here. In those instances where we, we couldn't fulfill the needs for the film, we went elsewhere, but when I say elsewhere, it Not was certainly, far. no, I mean it was Skagit County or, or uh, Centralia, uh, for instance, where we shot the, the train scene. We did everything we could to, to keep this whole production right here. And it was supported by local Bellingham businesses. The city helped support mm -hmm. it. We were able to you know, use the Rotor House, which was huge for the, the period scene. of yeah. scene that we had to shoot. Um, downtown Fairhaven, of course. You have no idea what we're facing up there. The runners will run up that mountain regardless of weather or trail conditions. Neither I nor the committee gives a damn if it takes them three days. They will run up that mountain. To look at what these guys did running through blizzards up a side of a mountain and back down in, in six hours plus, it, it's kind of hard to wrap your head around it. 
So as far as the mountain runners and Bellingham, truth is definitely stranger than fiction. Wow, it looks like uh, the arts are definitely supported here in Bellingham. What a wonderful night for us. Uh, and it's humbling to be mentioned up with these incredible talents up here. Um, this film could not have been made without the support of a community, this community. Um, if you haven't seen the film, I invite you to see it. It'll be at the Pickford on the 21st. It will also be in Finland uh, next month. So I would recommend the Pickford Theater for you. Um, I can't say enough about this gentleman, um, Partners in Crime. There's quite a few people in the audience here who worked on the film, supported the film. Uh, could they stand up? If you had anything to do with the Mountain Runners, just stand up. There we go. Come on. There's more than that. They're shy. There's more than that. And, and, and Brian Griffin, who was also nominated tonight to show you collaboration, also worked on the film and helped us out. So that goes to show you. So. Um, Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. I'll just say a couple of things. Um, as was uh, stated by us in the, the film, this was a, it, it might have been a concept that, that I had that I wanted to do, but as an in-house project, it, Brian just brought everything to the table. It wouldn't be the way it is today if it wasn't for him. And uh, Renee over there and, and uh, Eric, who, who put so much into it, but that's the, the inside part of the, of the production. I mean, if it wasn't for the community to come together and help on this over the time it took to make it, it would have never be done, and it wouldn't be done uh, to the highest levels as, as it was. I want to say that uh, we were at, I think, about 20 film festivals. And in that process, uh, we were literally, which I didn't expect, being ambassadors of our community. I mean, people in, in Austria and Alaska and many oh, other yeah, places yeah. wanted to know about this community. Where did we come from? How did this race come together? And what is it today? So we really were just what we were as we were ambassadors to the community. And one other short thing I just want to say is it seems like this is a film that just keeps going, 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 and it just doesn't want to stop, which is great. We like that. <laughs> um, but um, another thing that happened, I always have something new to say about every two to three months. And the latest is, um, to our surprise, um, in 1907, a young gentleman from Finland came to California. And he only worked labor jobs because he liked to run. And he ran and ran in all kinds of races. He came up here in 1912 and 1913 uh, to run the race. And he won Paul Westerlin in 1913. Well, just recently, within the past two months, like many immigrants, he lost touch with his whole family. Well, he didn't. He's long dead. Well, he's <laughs> long dead, yes. But in his time, yeah. like an immigrant, come over and he no longer sent letters home. And just recently, we reconnected with the family and showed them photos. And that family has reconnected with other members they didn't know about. And so um, I'm off to uh, Finland. Finland in, in uh, Stockholm in a couple of months with uh, Renee, and we're going to reconnect with that family. So the film has all kinds of interesting twists and turns. So thank you. Thank you. Starting in the 1970s with the founding of the nationally recognized Busada, pronounced Busada, dance troupe, this couple continued to be active members of our performing and visual arts community. She is considered one of the prim premier authorities on Middle Eastern and North African ethnic dance, as well as a talented writer and jewelry maker. He serves on the Bellingham Theater Guild Board of Trustees and stars in many of their productions. They have quite an impressive resume between the two of them. That's Shelley and Robert Muzzy. 
Muzzy and I met in 1975, and uh, Muzzy was a musician, mm -hmm. and he came to audition for my dance troupe. That's actually... <laughs> <laughs> That's what we call it now. I just right. wanted I just wanted to come up and meet the belly dancers with my friend Rick. So I met these great belly dancers. He says, I played a gig with them. He says, you should come up and meet them. And I went, okay. <laughs> From 1975 until about 1984, 85, we um, had the Busada dance troupe and uh, Muzzy was the musician, head musician. There were three musicians and five dancers. We did that for 10 years, and then when that kind of quit, uh, both of us started working with the Fairhaven players up at Western Washington University with Dr. David Mason, mm -hmm. and doing the Gilbert and Sullivans that he used to put on every year, and doing that. And then we were approached to do a gardening show on cable television. and. We have this big garden, and we kind of didn't really know what we were doing, but we figured there were a lot of other people in the in Whatcom County who didn't know what they were doing either. And so we kind of did guerrilla gardening. We just fell in love with gardening and learned a lot about it. You got more and more involved in theater, in the Theater Guild, and I, st I uh, opened a store in town, and I make my own jewelry, I do wire working, I sew, I've done, I did all the costuming for Busada for the dance troupe. Well, you couldn't buy that stuff then. No, you, you to, couldn't yeah. buy anything back then. You had to make it yourself. And so I made all the jewelry and all of the yeah. costumes. Great job. That's what she I She writes the Bellingham Bean, oh, I write the Bellingham comedy, Bean. comedy segment That's what we do. in the Chuck and Nut Radio <laughs> Hour. It's like a little Seinfeld show. It, it so you really didn't later know Later on got Easter into music. folk rock. So <laughs> apparently we don't know what the heck we want to do. I didn't plan to say anything. Um, this is, um, wow, thank you very much for, I don't know who nominated us. I have no idea why we're- It cost we're... me $500, honey. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, we. I was born here in Bellingham and grew up in California, came back and met this guy. And after 40 years, we've done, 40 years, we've done just about everything. We, <laughs> We had the dance troupe, we did the uh, gardening show, which was so awesome. Um, I learned more about gardening from doing that show than I ever thought I would. And um, it's just been our privilege to stay involved in the arts and the community. I never thought of it as being involved in the arts, it's just what we do. And it's we're that kind of people, we're kind of theatrical. and. Thank God we're just the two of us together and we can just be theatrical with each other. <laughs> and I really am honored that the community appreciates that. We appreciate living in Bellingham and we appreciate the opportunities we've been given to perform in so many different venues. And it, it's, it's, it is a fantastic community. As I saw tonight, you know, as we've all seen tonight, we are blessed to live here. and. Uh, it's pretty fun. It's been a fun journey. I don't think it's over yet, though. <laughs> Thank you. There's about 120 people we want to thank. So when I call your name, um, <laughs> come up, say a couple of minutes. PowerPoint's good. Um, wow, to be in this company, um, in this room, as well as the uh, other award recipients today. The Bellingham area, the arts are in great shape. Um, and it's not, I mean, we're performing artists. We only really have the moment to give. Uh, but, you know, the folks that are making the films, the folks that are working for humanity in general, it's like I'm just awe that we're even up here. And uh, 
I want to say that um, it's been my pleasure and my honor to be with Shelley these 40 years. Yeah, they call it auditioning, but I, I didn't go home for a week, uh, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Let it roll, let it roll. <laughs> Some of you don't get that long. But anyway, yeah, I even had to give my buddy Rick the keys to my truck and said, I'll, uh, I'll get back to Skagit someday. So, um, but anyway, I'm still auditioning, by the way. Uh, anyway, again, it's, it's our honor to be, to be part of this. Um, there is such great theater uh, alone in town, the performing arts, my goodness, the dance groups, uh, the idiom and the stuff that they do, my God, I mean, it's just great that they're, they're being supported. Uh, I'm fortunate to be part of the Bellingham Theater Guild, the old deceptive theater west of the Mississippi for 85, 86 years, and uh, uh, just it's been a pleasure and a been an honor. We're lucky people and we know it and we're gonna keep going for you. And uh, one more thing, um, there's a, uh, the next show that uh, I'm involved in, Shelley did some of the writing for, is Six Killer, Sunny Six Killer, buys the Washington Redskins at the Silver Reef Casino Event Center on June 12th, and it's about, um, it's about racism, about the mascot issue, and about, um, in general, yeah, it's, it's it, about what we call each other. It's, yeah, it's about naming, and it's, uh, uh, again, about racism, and uh, again, June 12th, Event Center, Silver Reef. Thank you all. Thank you. This next awardee is in its 11th year of success. This publication provides a valuable resource to our community by promoting arts and entertainment in both Whatcom and Skagit counties. Event calendars, articles, and features in both of their hugely successful magazine and online um, issues support a broad array of genres, from music to poetry to workshops and everything in between. They continue to be a leading force in entertainment news. That is Enter Entertainment News Northwest, Mark and Barb Fuller recipients. Mark and I had always wanted to start an entertainment magazine, um, but for many years, uh, David Hull, had a publication called Northwest Events, and uh, we didn't want to com compete with David. He did a great job with that publication. So uh, when he was no longer doing that, we decided to give it a go, and our first issue came out in February of 2003, 2004, actually. We recently switched to a um, a, a format of, of submitting information to a, a form on our website and uh, mm -hmm. by responding to our twice monthly emails to uh, tell them that okay it's it's time to, to send your stuff in because we, we don't have a staff of reporters out there combing through everything to to find out what's going on. We distribute to over uh, 200 locations in Whatcom and Skagit County, mm -hmm. and uh, we get about four, three to four hundred viewings um, on our of the online version of the magazine on our website. This is definitely an act of love. It's not something you can make a living from, but uh, but we love what we do. There's a lot happening. I mean, we wouldn't have a magazine like this if there weren't such a great, massive quantity of things to do in Whatcom and Skagit County. It's just amazing. We, we will never leave here. We love it in this community and we enjoy being able to promote all that this area has to offer. really bright up here. <laughs> um, I know I speak for all of the um, ENNW partners. Dorothy, Gladys, 
Lena, Lena, who is no longer here because she has a three-year-old. She was here at the beginning. And Mark. When I say that we're very pleased to accept this award, we feel especially honored to be in such fabulous company. Um, now, I'm not looking for applause or sympathy here, but Mark and I have been married for a very long time. <laughs> and over the years, he's come to me on numerous occasions and said, I have an idea. My response is most often, uh-oh. It was the fall of 2003 when we decided it was a good idea to publish a monthly arts and entertainment publication. The first person we asked to join us was Dorothy, which was one of the best decisions we've ever made. She owned and operated Textype for 20 plus years, which was located on Unity Street just around the corner from here. And she's been a rock. <laughs> She's retiring, and we will miss her very much. I want to take a moment to say thank you to just a few people. First of all, thank you to the partners. Everyone generously gives of their time and talents to make it the best that it can be. And no one hesitates to pick up extra share of the work when they're needed. I also want to thank uh, Lithtex Northwest, who's been our printer since day one. And they always do a fabulous job, even when I think that some of the photos or something might not look so great, it's not that great a quality. For some reason, it magically goes through the printer and comes out looking better than I thought it would. And so they've been terrific. They're always on time and very supportive of us. Our feature articles are also very important. Uh, they need to be enjoyable to read, but all of the information needs to be accurate as well. And over the years, we've had numerous people fill the shoes of the writers, and I'm, I'm grateful to all of them, past and present. Currently, our team of writers includes Joanna Nesbitt, Osa Hale, Marla Bronstein, Debbie Bernard, and Nancy Canyon. And I would be remiss if I didn't thank all of our readers. Every month, we distribute the new issue, we count the ones that we pick up, and most of the magazines are picked up. Um, so thank you. You are picking them up and reading them. And last and most importantly, we must thank the advertisers. Some of you have been with us since 2004 when we published our first issue. And I know that many of you continue to advertise simply to support the arts. Um, we couldn't do it without you. Um, the magazine wouldn't exist. That's our only source of revenue. So we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Okay, our next recipient, Sybil, oh great, <laughs> I'm going to start over. She is an all-around ardent supporter of the arts. In 2002, she established the Sta Sanford Piano Series, now the Sanford Hill Piano Series, which provides access to professional pianists for our community. She also supports the Whatcom Symphony, Symphony, the Bellingham Music Festival, and the Pickford Cinema, along with many others. In addition to her philanthropy work, she has enjoyed a distinguished career as a painting instructor and professional watercolorist, publishing a book in 2008. Our recipient is Sybil Sanford. My father was a big inspiration to me. He was one of the most generous people I've ever known. And he always taught his kids that giving was the foundation of a fulfilled life. And um, so after he passed away, I, I began a piano scholarship at the university in his name. It's called the William Sanford Piano Scholarship.
and in 2003 we began the, uh, the Sanford Piano Series. And then in 2011, Ford Hill signed on to that and now it's the Sanford Hill Piano Series. And it's very exciting. We, we bring wonderful people here. But the other thing that I really, really like about the philanthropy is it is a wonderful way to connect to the community. And it means a great deal to me because I'm in my studio a lot. And so it, this is a very solitary endeavor, which I love. But the philanthropy really connects me with what's going on in the community. And, and I love that. It's been so rewarding for me. work is never done and and the possibilities are infinite there is no such thing as boredom no such thing as retirement and it's it's a very exciting thing and it keeps your mind active it, it keeps you excited about life and I just couldn't be happier with it Well, it's great to see everybody. I feel incredibly honored to have received this award, and my deepest appreciation goes to Mayor Kelly Linville, the Arts Commission, and to Marion Ritter and Ford Hill for the nomination. As most of you probably know, both Marion and Ford have contributed a lifetime of outstanding service to the arts in this community. I also want to thank my wonderful friends and son, Phil, for being here to celebrate this occasion with me. Today, I want to share a few thoughts about passion, inspiration, and connection, and how they play a vital role in my life through the arts and philanthropy. I was born with a passion for art, and from my earliest days, I loved to draw and paint. When I was about 10, my father, who was an amateur painter, started taking me outside to paint with watercolors. I remember that he taught me about color and the importance of light and shadow. These sessions not only gave me a love of painting and of nature, they also provided me a chance to connect more deeply with my dad. Many years later, when I was in my mid-30s, we were still painting together. My dad was the first of many amazing art mentors who changed my life. So what inspires me and why do I paint? I basically paint what I love. Close-ups of nature, the landscapes of this beautiful place, Asian themes, and portraits. Actually though, I'm really only painting one thing, and that is light. Also, it is especially important to me that I have a feeling of connection with whatever or whomever I am painting. If it is a landscape, I must be fully immersed in it. If it is a person, I am wanting to capture a sense of their inner essence and what lies behind the eyes. In other words, painting the spirit within. I love the creative process, and for me it is one of the most exciting things in life. It is meditative and yet dynamic at the same time, and the possibilities are infinite. When I create, I am in a receptive state. The work of art seems to communicate what it needs, and I simply follow directions. 
It's almost like a back and forth conversation. And when the painting is finished, I often stand back and wonder how it all happened. Another of my passions is music. My parents provided piano lessons for me at the age of seven, and except for a few lapses, I have enjoyed playing the piano recreationally ever since. I remember coming home from school as a child and heading straight to the piano. Nobody ever had to remind me to practice. I had several fine piano teachers in my life, but in the late 70s, I found my mentor. I met local pianist Ford Hill and had the privilege of taking private piano lessons from him for two and a half years. He was the very finest teacher I ever had. Thus began one of the most important friendships of my life. As for philanthropy, I can honestly say that it is the most meaningful thing I've ever done and it has been a wonderful avenue to express my passion for the arts. What I love about it is the sense of connection with community and collaborating with others for the common good. It is a privilege to help support the talent of, of this community so that it can enrich all of us. And I feel honored to have been involved in this endeavor for over 18 years. The rewards for me have been immeasurable. But perhaps my greatest joy has come from the Sanford Hill piano series, which began in 2003. It was my good friend Jeff Gilliam's idea. And he came to me with a proposal to set up an official piano series that would bring fine pianists to Bellingham on an annual basis. I immediately liked the idea, and thus the Sanford piano series came into being. In 2011, Ford joined in as an equal partner, and it is now the Sanford Hill Piano Series. Thanks to this wonderful collaboration, we've been able to bring exceptional talent to Bellingham and provide concerts for the public and master classes for the students. In closing, I want to give special thanks to the Whatcom Community Foundation and Maury Ingram and her staff. They are a tremendous help and support to me. I also want to thank my dear friend, Sonia Sather, at the Western Foundation, who has collaborated with me for so many years to make good things happen. Again, I wish to thank Marion Ritter for her support, and also Ford and Jeff for their ongoing partnership in the piano series. My father, who was a source of inspiration to me in so many ways, summed up the joys of philanthropy in the following quotation. Living is giving, is loving, is living. Thank you. That was extremely sweet, whoever did that, <laughs> and well-deserved. Okay, for our next recipient, she is the queen of community art purchases and donations around town. Currently serving on the Arts Commission, she generally donates her time to bring culture and beauty to many local organizations which may not have the means to make art a priority. Through the purchase and distribution of sculpture, painting, poetry, and even handmade stockings, she brings to light the art that art is not only for the wealthy, but is meant for everyone, regardless of financial means. And the recipient is Jenny Cottrell. I, I do it because I really believe in the power of art. I think it makes a difference in people's lives, and I think especially um, in, in some of the shelter situations, I, I, be, I really believe that quality art uh, adds a value uh, 
to people's lives and I think people feel valued. Um, so it's been really exciting going around and just finding places and then I have an inventory in my head of of different art that I've seen and different um, artists that I've seen. And it, it always seems to be just a fit that, that makes sense. And sometimes I offer a specific piece and other times um, I will work with them, uh, you know, the director or whatnot to kind of choose something out that makes sense for the space. So this particular piece, um, I, I love the way that the top of the arch sort of mirrors the arch in the library entrance. And then I love the way that the falling water, it really reminds me of books. That wasn't the artist's intention, but um, it, it just felt like a, a right fit. And um, so many people that have come to the library have said that they really like it. So that's been nice. Um, there are two different ways that I go about doing donations. One is um, a personal donation where I have just donated things. Um, and the other is through group art purchase. And group art purchase is bringing many, many people's small donations together. And I, I just go around and look for blank walls and I talk to a lot, a lot of people. Um, I don't have a computer, so I make a lot of phone calls and I just you know, walk up and say, hi, I noticed you have a blank wall. Would you like some art? <laughs> and um, they, always, uh, they always seem to work out for the right thing. Um, there always seems to be one artist or one piece of artwork that seems to be just really, really appropriate for the space. Um, I have been making jewelry probably since 1980 yeah. and uh, worked at several bead shops and I've taught jewelry making classes for about 25 years. Um, I always go back to wire. Um, I've you know, done soldering and tried different techniques, but the wire uh, really grabs my attention. I always come back to the wire. I, I really believe that having original, high quality art that is made by a person, I think it resonates with people. And I think that people in these spaces, whether or not they know it uh, you know, consciously, um, I think it makes a difference in people's lives. Here, is that okay? Yep. No. No, 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 we can't hear you. Oh, you can't? Okay. Okay. Anyway, um, thank you so much, Mayor Linville. I appreciate it. And Arts Commission and um, the folks that nominated me. Um, and congratulations to all of the other recipients tonight. It's, it's always, I get so excited about this. Um, our community is so amazing. Um, I also see um, many folks in the audience here that are past um, award winners. Who are you out there? So congratulations to everybody. Um, the thing that I'd really like to say, though, is um, I feel that everything I do is really part of a team. I work with so many people. There's a huge community of people that I work with, artists, poets, collaborators, uh, donors, helpers, uh, computer helpers, flyer makers, my art group, my parents who put up with my endless uh, energy. <laughs> um, and I just feel so much support in this community. I would really like everyone that has worked worked, donated to, um, been involved with a group art project or a poetry event or something where I feel like I would like to say thank you to you. Would you please, please stand up? You're out there. So, thank you. <laughs> so, so, so thank you for, for helping support me um, doing what we all believe um, is enriching this, this community. So I think the two things that I wanted to point out are, I, I really believe, and a lot of people have said this already tonight, how incredibly powerful art is, how it really enriches our lives, and it touches something. Um, art is a way of, of communication of values and concepts, and the connection with people is, is so important, I think. Um, and the other part of that is that artists need to be financially supported. So we, we need to remember to, to go to events, to buy artwork, um, to help these folks that have bills be able to um, provide artwork that enriches our lives. Um, and I'm just going to do uh, what I do best, which is to plug events. So get your calendars out. <laughs> 
uh, Friday night at Rag Finery. Do you all know what Rag Finery is about? Upcycling, recycling fabrics. Um, on Friday night for Art Walk, the doors open at 6 and at 7 o'clock you will see wedding dresses that have been repurposed. And I did one, so, so come check it out. Um, Big Rock Garden Park has a Mother's Day event that's been going on for many years. This year it's May 10th from 1 until 4. There will be plein air artists, there will be poets, there will be snacks, and hopefully um, not rain. Uh, Mother Nature usually puts on a beautiful show for Big Rock Garden Park. We have over 30 sculptures that are parts of the, of the city's permanent collection. Um, please, please come check that out if you haven't been there before. Um, I, uh, there's going to be a pop-up gallery on the June 3rd um, Art Walk with Anita Boyle and Mary, Mary Jo Mauti, so please come check that out. In the same building um, at Bay Street Village, Trish Harding um, is having a show, as she often does, and I would like to announce um, that Trish Harding's piece... Uh, is, is going, to be, going to be doing a painting. The next group art purchase um, will be for the YMCA. It's gonna be a large painting. It has, uh, it's gonna be commissioned uh, next to the rock wall. So um, the, the two other, so I'm really excited about working with Trish on this. Um, there have been two other group art purchases this year um, for 2015. Um, Lori Potter has uh, a wonderful show at the Whatcom Land Trust that's up. She, She's over there. <laughs> um, and um, a piece was donated by, I don't know, probably 20 people at least, um, 20, 30 people. Um, uh, she did an Indiegogo campaign, so please go check that out. And then Amy Armitage has a, a piece that was um, donated down to Northwest Youth Services in Skagit County, actually. Um, OK. I'm almost, I'm getting there. Uh, <laughs> in October, it's a ways away, but please put on your calendar going to um, Wacom Artist Studio Tour. Always an exciting opportunity to go see people's tours. All of this information, will, of course, will be in Entertainment News Northwest, so pick up your copy and get the dates. <laughs> um, the last, last thing I'd like to say is, um, who here has been to the Firehouse Performing Arts Center? Okay, we all know this is an amazing community asset. Um, it is currently for sale, and I hope that we can find a way to keep this in, this in the community. If there's anyone in this room that happens to have you know, a million dollars or so in their pockets, come talk to me. Um, <laughs> uh, we will also uh, be happy to work with a loan. <laughs> anyway, I, again, I just thank you all so much, and I'm so um, grateful to be part of this community, and um, go Bellingham. <laughs> okay, the suspense is... <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> See, she's still giving art to the community. Thank you. Okay, um, our next recipient... <laughs> Our next recipient is currently serving as vice chair of the Bellingham Festival of Music. Oh, excuse me, the Bellingham Music Festival. Her leadership has been instrumental in the creation of several music programs that support and benefit the younger generation. First is the Play It Forward Chamber Music Residency, which allows established chamber groups to share their talent and wisdom with as many as 3,000 students each spring. She is also responsible for the success of the Welcome Home Recital Series, highlighting young local musicians who are currently studying to be professionals. Our recipient is Karen Berry. Come, come. We have so many young people in this community because of the music support we have with the music club, the symphony are fabulous music teachers, both private and in the schools, that um, we should be doing this. We have wonderful kids going out into the world trying to create a career in music, and it's so difficult. Let's support them. The Play It Forward Chamber Residency is where we, together with the Whatcom Symphony, bring an ensemble from Colburn Conservatory in Los Angeles to come up they live here, um, they play through our middle and uh, high school classrooms, they do all school assemblies. It's a give and take, they answer questions, they teach the kids about the music they're playing, about the instruments they're playing, and it's 
What makes it so special is they're so young and they are so good. These kids are the best truly in the world. They come from all over the world. Um, so they come up here, they play, they inspire. They're so relevant because they're so young. They know how to relate to kids on their level. And yet our students get to see really exceptional performances that uh, by these very young people, it's really quite exciting. How do we get classical music events away from everyone having gray hair to having young people in the audience? How do we inspire people? And this is how you do it. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor Linville and everyone responsible for this. Um, you can imagine my surprise when uh, a few weeks ago I was home ripping through my mail and tore open what I thought was my sewer bill <laughs> to see that I had received this award. And I'm very humbled by it. And those of you that know me will also understand my horror when I went on to read that I had to say something. So here we go. Um, I think that the, the video kind of explained the Welcome Home concert in the Play It Forward Chamber residency. Um, how did this happen? Well, my husband and I raised two children here in Bellingham, started them both at the age of five on string instruments, and we saw the incredible benefits that a music education gives to children, those children that can do that. It's my dream that every child should be able to have this kind of an education. Um, and at bare minimum, I would love to see them at least exposed to the benefits of some of what music can do. So when my son, who had gone off to conservatory, first of all, we have two children, as I said, and one of them had the good sense to go into the sciences um, to make a living, but my youngest is my dreamer, and he went on to follow his passion of music. And uh, my husband and I saw what a difficult road it was. So. Um, one time, uh, as he had gone off to school, he, he called and said, I really want to do a recital in Bellingham. And um, he said, and I, I'm, I'm going to paraphrase what he said, but he said, you know, Mom, there is nothing like playing for people that know you and love you and care about you. It is the most awesome thing to do. And, and so I went to Mary Pat Thuma after he did this very well-received recital, and I said, Mary Pat, we need to do this every year, not with him, but let's, let's invite someone else. And Mary Pat, who is so wonderful, those of you that know her know this, she simply said, we'll call it the Welcome Home Concert. And that's how it started. We are now going into our sixth year. You as a public are fantastic because you are always there. We fill, we pack these venues every single year. Some of you, I see uh, Brian here, some of you have children that have actually participated in it. It, it. it is just so marvelous to watch. The Play It Forward Chamber, as you saw, uh, there is a um, collaboration with the Whatcom Symphony, and it grew out of our desire to get something as in terms of outreach into our middle and high schools where there was a real glut. As a matter of fact, things were being cut. And so that, that was how that started. I, I happened to know of a quartet in Los Angeles that was doing graduate work that I figured I could get cut to come up here. And they, they were here actually for three weeks um, and went did did over, I think, 18 performances. So really, really great stuff for these kids to be able to experience. But this project is way too big for one person. And so I have to share it with, with many of you here. Um, first of all, the board of the Whatcom Symphony, who bought into this along with us. We, we collaborate on this. I have to thank Colburn Conservatory, who now also collaborates with us. We are going into our fifth season with the Play It Forward Chamber Residency. So um, it's been really successful, really well received. And I can't quit with my thank yous until I um, say, first of all, a shout out to Mary Passmore with the Whatcom Symphony that um, does all my in-school scheduling. She should be up here with me. Also. Um, my incredible 
wonderful Bellingham Festival of Music board. This all volunteer board never quits working. They, they are tireless, they are fun. And whenever I come to them with these harebrained ideas, they never say no, they say, how can we help? So I applaud them um, last of all, and then I'll, I'll go because I know we're all tired. Um, I have to thank my husband who um, maybe some of you know, he works really hard in a really stressful job. And he allows me, uh, we do this together, we turn our house into a college dorm. At least twice a year, he comes home for two weeks to a house filled with kids, filled with energy. We sit around the table, all of us together, and it's, it's pretty amazing. So thank you, Don. Um, thank you all very much. OK, this is the last one. Finally, it is my great pleasure to bestow the Living Treasure Award. Living Treasure. Isn't it nice to get an award that makes, while you're living? I think that's so nice. Um, to someone who should be honored for his passion and leadership in the cultural betterment of our city. He was a key figure in many city projects, such as Boulevard Park, the Village Green, and Depot Market Square. He is also an avid local historian, having notably curated a show at the Watkin Museum about one of our early leaders, J.J. Donovan. He additionally was um, instrumental in securing the donation of the J.J. Donovan sculpture recently installed in Fairhaven. His talent is truly well-rounded, as he is also an accomplished painter, woodcarver, and musician and is actively involved in the ukulele community. His accomplishments are many, his influence is tangible, and our appreciation is eternal. And our recipient is Brian Griffin. I've got a terrible enthusiasm problem, and I guess an active imagination. One day after the Rotary Club had decided to take on the project and build a park along State Street to save the view because they were going to build condominiums and apartments there, I drove down and stopped my car and got out and looked down over the edge and watched the log trucks dumping logs down there. And I, all of a sudden it came to me, my God, here's our opportunity to get to the waterfront. So we've got to expand this idea of a park to include the waterfront. And I, and I wrote a letter to the board of the Rotary Club and made a presentation and everybody said, that's great, let's do it. Yeah. And we did it. So this is a tenor ukulele. There are four sizes of the ukuleles, and I make a number of the sizes. This is a tenor. I've even invented my own design. I call this a pine cone ukulele. I wanted to make a uke that was a travel uke that would be tough, and you could take, uh, take uh, on your trips. And I wanted to make it of Northwest woods. So this is made with Sitka spruce, and big leaf, our local big leaf maple. Sitka spruce is a local wood. And uh, well, this walnut neck is from a walnut tree that came down from, uh, the, that was cut on DuPont Street 35 years ago. made a terrible mistake. I was going to say 
I was going to say, that's the first time I've kissed a queen. You know, Kelly was the, the Blossom Time queen a few years back. <laughs> but I'm not going to... But I'm, gonna, but I'm not going to say that because it's not the first time I've kissed a queen. My lovely wife, Maria, I just recalled, was a homecoming queen in a high school. And that was a few years ago, too, I guess. Well, um, gosh, you know, Shannon told me that, that I had to come up here and blow my own horn for five minutes. And, but I don't have to now because you saw everything. <laughs> but in trying to think of what to say, uh, it, it occurred to me that most every good thing that I've done in this community was in partnership with the city of Bellingham. Uh, the parkade, uh, uh, a piece of Boulevard Park, uh, the Fairhaven Village Green, the, the city of Bellingham is a remarkable place, as we've seen so many times, as it's been repeated so many times today. Uh, but we've also had a remarkable city government. I've been, I guess I've been active in the city over five administrations, and they've all been terrific. And they have moved this community forward uh, to be the great place that it is today. So, um, I just want to say I'm thrilled, I'm truly thrilled for the, to get this uh, honor, uh, partially because of some of the people that have received it before. Galen Byrie, who, believe it or not, was the assistant scoutmaster in Troop 7 when I was a Boy Scout. And uh, I always admired Galen and, of course, what he's done. And Pat Fleeson, who saved the city hall. And, uh, uh, well, uh, some other terrific people. So thank you so much uh, to the Art Commission and to Mayor Kelly. Can I say one thing about you before, you, before you all clap? Yeah. Stand up gonna... over here next Okay, to me. we're going to. You're a treasure, so I get to stand by you. <laughs> so um, at one point in time, Brian went and did an oral history of my father. And um, I'm not going to cry. <laughs> and I found out things about my family that I didn't know because of the way he had to talk to my father. And my father shared um, history about our family that was both a surprise and a pleasure to know. So I just need to thank Brian for being my own personal treasure, oh, too. That's very nice. Thank you. Thank you so much. So that ends our program today, but it certainly doesn't end the involvement that our community will have and has had in the arts. Thank you all of you for being such strong art supporters and making our city a better place to be because of what you do. And I just want to add a special thank you to our staff, Shannon Tizey, Fiona Starr. You did a wonderful job tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you.